Next up, we have another pre-recorded uh, spe speech uh, about eggplant library, connecting robot framework to advanced image-based automation. So basically continuing on that last question. Uh, let's enjoy the talk by Andre Mochinin and Rico Feist. Hello, everybody. I'm happy to be part of Robocon this year. My name is Andre Mochinin. I'm working for a company called Imbus, software test experts in Germany. My co-speaker is Rico Feist from DBNet's German Railways. And today, we would like to introduce you the robot framework Eggplant Library. What is actually eggplant, you could ask? Well, from the botanical point of view, it's a berry. From the kitchen point of view, it's a vegetable. From the test automation point of view, it's a test automation tool based on image recognition. An important note is it's a proprietary, non-free product. And a disclaimer, we are not working for eggplant, we are not paid for this presentation anyhow, and it's not our goal to advertise eggplant itself. But we would like to show you how to connect it to robot framework using the library that we have developed. The library itself is fully open source, it's completely free, you can find it on GitHub, and everybody is welcome to use it and to improve it. So why we needed actually eggplant? In the project, we decided to use it because the project had some quite specific test automation challenges. The project itself is developing a new train control system for German Railways. To tell you more about the project and about the challenges, I would like to pass the word to Rico. I would like to give a short overview on the project and the DBNets AG. The DB Netz AG is the railway infrastructure manager of the Deutsche Bahn, the German state railway. About 44,500 employees are responsible for maintaining and controlling a network of about 33,300 kilometers of track. Every day, there are about 23,500 trains controlled on the network. This train traffic is controlled by eight rail operating centers called Betriebszentrale. They are located in major cities in Germany. In these pictures, you can see three out of the 600 workstations for dispatching and traffic control. These workstations are equipped with multiple displays because there is a lot of traffic to manage. All in all, there are 2.7 millions of train path kilometers per day, and the network is used by 440 different railway companies. This creates some challenges for testing. The first challenge stems from the way these workstations are set up. I think it's kind of obvious that a regular employee should not be able to install any software, so these systems are hardened, which leads to the challenge that no additional software can be installed on these systems, not even for testing purposes. So all connections have to be made by either RDP or BNC. The second challenge stems from the tested software itself. In this slide, you can see a train graph created by the tested software. Part of it has been magnified. In this interface, every line represents a train. Those lines can be clicked or altered by drag and drop. This is achieved by using the canvas provided by Java. However, the individual lines of a canvas cannot be accessed by regular test software. How we overcame those challenges will now be presented by Andre. Thank you, Rico. So the project has some challenges. We have a restricted access to systems under test, which means we can install no classical test automation tool on the same machine where we have the test application. And we have quite a specific image-based user interface, which blocks us from using a normal test automation tool, which is able to access the graphical user interface controls like buttons and text fields and so on. That's why we decided to use eggplant. But why actually connect an eggplant to robot framework? Well, robot framework has some significant advantages comparing to eggplant. When I'm saying eggplant, I mean eggplant functional. There's actually a set of products called eggplant. We are working with eggplant functional only. 
So Robot Framework has better reporting, better structuring of test cases and keywords and the open architecture and so on. Actually, you know all these advantages. So we wanted to use it and we wanted Eggplant to be integrated in the entire test automation architecture which contains the layer above, which is keywords and test cases in Robot Framework. In the architecture, we have quite a lot of different systems under test. We have web applications, we have Windows desktop applications based on Java, based on different frameworks and languages. We have API tests, we have XML files and databases we would like to address. We check and test all these systems under test using different libraries, which are connected to Robot Framework. It is all also connected to the continuous integration system. It is GitLab CI for triggering tests and for reporting. And we wanted Eggplant to be integrated in this architecture. That's why we started developing the Eggplant library. But what is actually the difference of the Eggplant and the Eggplant library comparing to other image recognition libraries like SQLi, Horizon and other libraries? Well, the Eggplant itself has some similarities and differences. It's also an image-based test automation, which means images are compared pixel by pixel. It also uses OpenCV, at least partly. The OCR engine is third party from EBB. The interesting thing about Eggplan is the architecture. It's a so-called non-invasive architecture using the RDP or VNC connection, which means Eggplant, is in self, Eggplant itself is installed on one machine and system under test is another machine where is nothing installed. So the only thing you need is a connection via remote desktop or VNC. Eggplant also has its own language, which is called SenseTalk. It's quite special language. It has its own, its own integrated development environment. It is all-in-one, including tuning of images, OCR, image update, adjustment, setting different parameters of all this image recognition, tweaking them. It also has a connection manager to different systems under test. It is actually all quite useful when it's all combined in one development environment, which allows you to maintain typical difficulties which you have using the image-based test automation, making your life easier. And now the Eggplant library for Robot Framework. It is also a little bit special because it is, it is no wrapping Eggplant functions in keywords, at least not all of them. It is not the goal of the library. Instead, it is giving access to the scripts which you still develop in Eggplant. It calls them as keywords in Robot Framework which means you continue developing the scripts, the keywords, in Eggplant itself using the Eggplant development environment, which makes actually a lot of sense because it's quite handy using this development environment for image maintenance, uh, for replacing images and so on. To call these scripts, you need to start Eggplant in the so-called EggDrive mode. It includes the XML RPC server and the Eggplant library, which is written in Python, includes the XML RPC client. In this way, there is a connection between the Eggplant and Eggdrive mode and the robot framework, which allows you calling keywords. Apart from the Eggplant scripts, there are also some static keywords, which are included in the library. They are needed for connecting to systems under test, for taking screenshots, recording videos of test execution, and so on. But now, let's start a live demo. Let's actually see how the Eggplant library works. First, you need Eggplant, because as mentioned before, using the Eggplant library has no intention to replace writing scripts in the Eggplant development environment. After you have started it, for which you need a license, by the way, you see such kind of welcome window. And here you can create or open an existing Eggplant suite file. I have prepared an example for us, and you see this suite file, it is actually a folder. It contains different subfolders. One of them is scripts, 
Here inside you can see script files. I have prepared them already and each of them is going to be exposed as a keyword to robot framework by the library. Now let's open this eggplant suite file in the eggplant development environment. You see now it's open and on the left side you see the project explorer and here, here are exactly the same scripts that you see on the right side in the Windows Explorer. These scripts, they are intended to automate a simple test case. I'm going to show this test case run manually first, but for this we need a system under test. Eggplant has a connection manager and here you can manage different connections to different systems under test. I have already one here. If we go to properties, we see it's a VNC connection. It could be also RDP. It has some connection data and the name, which we are going to use later to identify this connection. Good, let's open it. You see it's actually a Windows machine and like in a normal VNC viewer, I can control it. I can click buttons, I can open a start menu or a browser like this. Fine. The test case I'm going to automate. It includes launching a notepad first using the start menu, entering some text like open text and then compare this text to the expected value. And in the end I'm going to close the editor without saving anything. And for this test case I have prepared four scripts. The first one is called Start Editor. You see now the special language that Eggplan uses. It's called Sense Talk. The first line clicks the Windows button, and this Windows button is an image. I have captured it before along with other images. The second step is entering the text, which is editor, then clicking the editor icon, it's also an image, and waiting in the end for the editor title to appear. The next step is inputting the editor text. It already has a parameter. This parameter has a default value hello world, and this value is going to be used if we execute the script now. This script, it calculates the area where to enter the text. It is calculated based on the title location. And finally, the text from the parameter is entered. The next script is checking this value. It, has, it also has a parameter, the expected text, with the default value hello world. By the way, these parameters and their default values, they are exposed by the library to robot framework, along with the documentation of the keyword, which is captured from the um, comment area above. The robot framework for Martin is supported as well, including bold, italic, and so on. So this script calculates, based on the title location again, where to read the text using the optical character recognition. And finally, this text read is compared to the expected text. And in the end, we are closing the editor using a shortcut. So these four scripts, let's try to execute them one by one using this play button in the eggplant development environment. So let's see what's happening here. The start menu is started, the editor is launched. You see some rectangles highlighted. These are the places where Eggplant is searching for the images or performing the OCR operations. Good, the editor is started. Let's input some text now. The default value is hello world. That's why it's placed here. The next script is check editor text. The default value is again hello world, which means the check is supposed to pass actually. Good, the check was successful. And now let's close the editor using the last script. Fine. 
the scripts work, now let's use them as keywords in our robot framework test case. I'm opening this folder in the Visual Studio code now. And I have prepared a template for us. First, you need for sure to install the library. How to do it? You find the information on the GitHub page of the library. It's actually quite easy. You are using the normal pip install command. When you are importing the library, you have to set a couple of parameters. One of them is mandatory, the path to the eggplant suite file because the library needs to know where to look for all the script files. And there are a couple of keywords which are included in the library. They are static and you have to call them anyway, like opening the session, closing the session and connecting to a system under test. That's why this template. Let's create a first test case. And the test case is going to be check notepad text what i'm going to call here well first i need to start the editor i just start typing typing the name of the script and the eggplant library suggested suggests the name of the script files in the code completion it searches automatically through the script directory of the suite file and all of the script files are exposed as keywords. And by the way, you don't need to start eggplant for this. It's all file-based. So start in the editor, then input in the text. Um, by the way, you now see the documentation and the default value of parameters. Let's enter some other value like sum value. And now let's check the text using this keyword and let's make the test case fail. So that's why we expect another value here. And in the end, we need to close the editor. This step I'm going to place as a test teardown. Close editor. Fine, the test case is ready. Before we execute it, we need to launch eggplant in the special egg drive mode. This egg drive mode includes the XML RPC server, allowing for the library to connect and to launch tests. You can do it manually. You can also use one of the prepared patch scripts. You can download them on the GitHub page. I'm going to use one of them now. It would be start eggplant and launching it. This command line window, it's an output of eggplant in the egg drive mode. It takes a couple of seconds to start. So let's wait. The eggplant is checking the license first. And finally it's running. So let's execute the test case. I'm clicking this run button. Let's open the system under test connection. So the steps are executed, the notepad is launched, some value is entered. Now the check is done and it's supposed to fail because we expect here another value. Good, the check is failing apparently. And finally, the notepad is supposed to be closed. Don't save anything. Fine, the execution is finished. Let's open the log file. So this is the normal robot framework execution log. And you see here this keyword that failed, check editor text. And it contains the output of the eggplant script, including the actions that were performed, and the error message, which is also duplicated here in the failure.
And the library takes a screenshot automatically in the moment of failure and includes it into the log. It has some unique name and all the screenshots are saved in the special screenshots folder. Fine, let's now improve this execution. I'm going to include the video recording in the execution log. For this, I'm going to create a couple of new keywords to use as test setup and test teardown. In these keywords would be start video and system under test. First, I would, now, I would like to connect to the system under test. It's actually the same that I have here. I'm just moving it inside. Then I'm going to start movie. The start movie is a special keyword which is included in the library. It starts the video recording. It takes some parameters, but we can just use default values. And I'm also going to move starting the editor itself in this setup keyword as well. So the next keyword is stop video and system under test. And here I'm going uh, to close the editor and stop movie. Fine. Now I'm going to use these new keywords in the test setup and tear down. Start video and system under test. Stop video and system under test. Good. So the test suite is ready. Let's execute it. Let's see what's happening in the system under test. The steps are basically the same. The editor is launched. The check is going to be performed and is going to fail again. The difference will be only in the log file. Mm -hmm. We see that the check failed. Good. Now the notepad is to be closed. Fine. The execution is finished. Now let's see the log file. So basically it's the same with the same output. But now we have not only the screenshot. I'm going to make it bigger. We also have the video recorded automatically. And it's included in the log file. You can play it directly here. This thumbnail, the preview, is actually the screenshot itself. It's the moment of video where the error happened. But if we play the video here, it starts from the beginning. So the entire test case execution is here. I can zoom it in. And it's actually the same test case with the rectangles highlighted and so on. I can move in the video and navigate for sure. And in the end, the check is done and the editor is closed. So this is how the video recording looks like. All the videos, they are included in the, in the log and they are recorded in the special folder called movies. Fine. So this is the end of the demo presentation. All right, let's summarize then. The eggplant library for robot framework that we developed helped us to integrate eggplant in the test automation architecture based on the robot framework. It helped us to gain the advantages of robot framework and to overcome the disadvantages of eggplant. And these are the features of the library. It allows you calling eggplant scripts as keywords in the robot framework. It is able to get all keyword information from eggplant scripts, like arguments, including their default values. You can also use the name parameter syntax. It is able to get the documentation, the tags, the link to the source file, and is able to pass the return values. The different data types are supported. The subfolder structure is supported as well. In case of failure, an automatic screenshot or video can be taken on the 
videos and uh, images, the search rectangles are highlighted, which makes the debugging easier. There is also additional information, which is locked in case of OCR debugging. If there is a warning in the eggplant script, it is also um, passed to the robot framework and appears in the robot framework log. The language server extension features are also supported in Visual Studio Code, allowing you to run tests separately, allowing you to use the um, interactive console, jump to the source code file, which means to the eggplant script. And actually, you can also edit the script directly in Visual Studio Code if you don't want to use the eggplant development environment. The library is located on GitHub. Everybody is welcome to use it and improve it. It's open source. And thank you, Deutsche Bahn, for open source and the library. This is the end. Now, thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to answer all of the questions in the live session. Hello, Rico and Andre. Hi, Hello. nice to see you. Thank you for the talk. I think everyone enjoyed. And I think you broke some kind of record with the questions. We have plenty of questions and not enough time, but we'll, we'll start with the questions. Uh, first one isn't really about your presentation in, in a sense, but people were interested in what plugins do you have installed for VS Code to get those robot auto completions and runs? Well, it's actually this standard language server protocol extension, nothing special, the most used one that you are usually using nowadays. Uh, the next question is about the actual presentation. So is it possible to run the test slash egg eggplant in headless mode without the uh, graphical user interface? The eggplant itself doesn't have a kind of headless mode like you know it from the Selenium or from the browser, but it's not actually an issue because we are already running uh, the, the tests in a continuous integration on some virtual machines running Windows, and we don't have to show these uh, monitors of these machines during the launching. So actually it works without keeping your eyes on the screen. Uh the next question is, RDP connections can compress the image information transferred to the client, which can lead to artifacts. How can eggplant library handle this? This is a very good question. The eggplant library itself is, in any case, not going to handle it anyhow. This is the job of the eggplant done. I know that actually it's supposed to work good. But I know that might, might be some differences. Riku, please say if I'm wrong. But as far as I'm concerned, there might be some difference between using VNC and RDP. In our project, we are using mainly VNC. Um, I, I want to add that we have made sure that there is a good connection so that actually there is no need for compression or at least a compression with a level that creates artifacts. Good. Uh what, about, what are the main benefits when you compare this solution with other solutions, including Sikuli? So um, uh, yes. I wanna, I, I'd like to answer that because I made the initial research regarding what uh, tools to use. And egg, the main benefit of eggplant over Sikuli is that eggplant uh, has much more uh, um, possibilities regarding image recognition. So you can you have so many settings regarding uh, the threshold, for example. I read another question there. So you can set a threshold, for example. You can set images to blinking and such. And these are all features that when we decided for eggplant, Sikuli did not have. How about managing big data? meaning video in this case? Well, it can take some space, <laughs> that's true. But there is a possibility to maintain and set the compression. And you can set it, uh, the compression rate more or less uh, low, which means the videos are not going to take gigabytes. And uh, yeah, actually what we are using, we are not recording video in each of the test cases. We are deleting the video if the test case was successful which means in the end, you have only videos from a failed test cases, what actually you need. 
So which means in the end, he maybe have some hundreds of megabytes of videos, but it's still all right to place them on some, um, on some network drive or upload in the GitLab CI. Few more questions. Uh, what kind of situation eggplant would be good or best solution? So um, you can use well. That's that's why I um, well had that that short introduction. So if you can't install anything, for example, on your system under test, or if you are testing older software, for example, this is another um, well situation we use eggplant in. We have software that's rather old that runs on Windows NT. Actually, you can't install any current uh, test software there, so we are using Eggplant to connect to those systems. Uh, I think this next question is about OCR. Uh, can this be used to check the texts in the photographs or images? Excuse me, could you please repeat it again? Uh, yeah, so basically I think this is about OCR. So can this tool be used to check the text visible in the images, so basically detecting that text. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we are using it quite widely. It was also inside this example that was shown. Yes, extracting the text from the image and reading it and asserting it, it's one of the major functionalities of Eggplant, and we are using it quite widely. It also has a lot of tweaking possibilities like uh, text difference that can be considered when compa comparing. So it also has some advanced features. And last question, uh, how stable are your tests in CI? How, how often do you have these flaky tests? Often. <laughs> <laughs> I think there were yesterday three people in the audience that said that they never had flaky tests. They were lying. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, hey, thank you, Rico and Andre. This was really good presentation and nice to have this chat with you. You will probably be available on, on the chat on the online platform, so please ask more questions there. Next up for us, we have a break. We continue here, 15.30, so half past three, and then we'll have two more sessions uh, after that. Thank you so much. Thank you, see you.